Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Will. Um, today I'm about to move along in the process of burying my chestnut logs and I'm gonna stack my tiger sawgill logs and I have some shiitakes over here. Um, these have been colonizing for the past uh, six months or so. We inoculated these back in February of 2022. So they've been just, these are the logs right here that we inoculated. And they have been sitting on these, these were fresh cut logs. As you can see right here, these are about four to six inches in diameter. And these are just sitting flat on the ground. And you put the inoculated logs on top of these um, so, they can, so they can colonize. You don't want to put these logs directly on the ground in my experience because a, a ton of other wild mushrooms will just will uh, colonize the log quicker than the actual mushrooms that you had inoculated in the logs will colonize them. So that's why we keep them on these here. I think they call them, them log rafts. Um, they just sit here, like I said, for about six months until until these the mushroom that was inoculated here is completely colonized in this log and then you move on to the next process um, for the chestnut mushrooms we're going to bury these halfway the logs in the ground so i'll set up the camera later and we'll get to burying those um, the tiger sawgill i actually could not find much information online on what to do with those i had a little pamphlet these came from Mushroom Mountain, which is in Easley, South Carolina, and I had a little pamphlet, but I can't find the one that had the, the tiger saw gills. But I did some research, and they are related to shiitake mushrooms, um, so I'm just going to stack them up in a cabin, and we'll see what happens from there. I've never actually grown chestnut mushrooms or tiger saw gills, so I, I don't know how good that's going to work out here. But they came from Mushroom Mountain, which, as I said, um, is out of Easley, South Carolina, which is like an hour and a half down the road from here. So, and they grow there. So they, they sh everything that they grow there should be able to grow here. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stack up the shiitake logs and, and bury these and y'all can watch, stick along. So the most difficult part about doing this is that these mushroom logs have to be in a shaded environment which often means that it's going to be in the woods and this ground is littered with roots <laughs> but um am <coughs> let's see am leonard and son is the name of this company for this spade right here this is called a spade and you can see that it's gripped with metal all the way along it so I can cut through these roots fairly easy. I could probably sharpen it and it'd be even better, but this this shovel is probably older than I am. So check out, they, these people are still in business. I, I looked them up the other day and I reckon they still got, oh, watch out baby. I reckon they still have some good products. So yeah, this thing is awesome. They gotta get you a good shovel like this before you try to do this. So, I'm coming along here, but I just also want to mention that I also did read that instead of burying them like this, as I'm doing, which I might do for just a couple of these logs and then try them the way that I'm talking about now, you can bury these logs like this, but if it is too much of a hassle to do this, you can also um, just put the logs on the ground as they are directly on the ground and you can put just mulch on top of them. Uh, I don't think you need to put them that thick they said or wood chips uh, fresh wood chips they just said uh, layer the wood chips on there and just kind of level them out flush with the top of the logs I think the reason is I guess these mushrooms just to have, have to have a lot more moisture so in case you can't do that try putting the mulch or the wood chips on them I don't have any fresh wood chips but I might try doing some of the mulch over here or something I might put that on video but yeah, some other options in case you can't do this.
By the way, if y'all saw this vegetation in the back of my head, that is there on purpose. That is American Beautyberry. I forgot my mosquito spray down here, and this is in an old bottom, and there's I'm getting eat up right now. Well, I'm not getting eat up as much as I was before because I put my Beautyberry vegetation back there, but let me get back to the video. I got a couple other things that I'm going to do tonight, so I'm not going to make a, um, a trench for all these chestnuts. I'm going to come back this weekend and do some more. Um, but I'm about to put them in here and I'll show you how this is done. Look at there. That's actually a little bit deeper than it needs to be. You actually only want them buried about halfway. And that's a little more than that. So I'm going to just put some more dirt in here. The other logs are thicker than this, so it's good soil in here, as you can see. Maybe a little more. That's about perfect. I need a little bit more on this end. Good. Bring some more logs over here. Get them close together. It's a monster. Holy crap. And you're actually going to place the, the dirt back in there. Like so. Ah, oh, perfect. All right, and like I said, just take the dirt, push it back in here. If you can get it, like, I mean, look at all that root ball. I might not be able to get a lot of this dirt in there, but try to fill those gaps a little bit at least. I have done these with oyster mushrooms before, but I did not let them colonize properly. So the logs ended up just rotting in the ground. So make sure you let them colonize before you do this. Um, but I was saying, if any of y'all have ever done this before, let me know. If I'm doing anything wrong, I'm pretty sure this is the way that I read to do it. But I, I mean, I won't know until I get some mushrooms. They said specifically to make sure you kind of press down to get these air gaps out. Those air gaps in there and it'll dry them out. Kind of tuck it, tuck the soil around the log. That's about good. I'm not sure when these will fruit, but as soon as I get the first fruit of these, I'll definitely make another video on it. I've never tried chestnut mushrooms or the tiger sawgill. I'm excited about that as well. My friend Casey actually bought these. I was just going to do the shiitakes, but uh, he was inoculating with me and he went ahead and bought this stuff. So we're trying it out. And boom. Like so. I got three more over here. No, excuse me, just these two. I'm going to bury those later. And these are the tiger sawgills, and there's some shiitakes, and there's more shiitakes back up in there. But uh, you see, it's colonized pretty well. I didn't wax these ends. Um, in Track Hodder's book, he only says wax one end, so I only wax one end, but I'm going to try doing both ends next because it seems like these. I just can't keep them watered enough. Maybe you can get away with just waxing one end of the log um, if you have like access to water, but I don't. I don't have any water down here, so I'm gonna stack up these tiger sawgills right here, and you can watch that.
these saw gills are actually these are sweet gums which will rot really fast um, I was just experimenting with it but there are some oaks in here so yeah I don't know how it's gonna perform on the sweet gum I would I would recommend doing oak for this um, if anybody knows any different though let me know I can't find almost any information on these tiger saw gills online so And there you have it. Uh, shiitake cabins go just like this. So, but as I said, if y'all know anything about tiger saw gills, please let me know. I'm going to take, these are the logs that they were sitting on. I didn't actually inoculate these with anything, but I'm going to take these and I'm going to throw them in this temporary little spring creek right here. And uh, hopefully they'll fruit some oyster mushrooms. So that's a good tip if you want uh, wild oyster mushrooms at least in the southeast if you just throw a, a sweet gum or a poplar like that into the into the like halfway into the water a lot of times that will uh, produce oyster mushrooms uh, oyster mushrooms seem to like hackberry the best but we don't have any hackberry so um i'm gonna use what i got this is poplar right here but uh yeah let me move that I don't want to use these um, to set any more logs on because as you can see they already have wild mushrooms on them. I like using fresh logs as the the colonization spacer logs if, if that's what you want to call them because uh, I don't want any mushrooms that might be potentially living in any piece of wood that I would use um, to, to get into the colonized logs. So I use fresh, fresh cut logs for this and then throw them away after that. One more. That'll be a little walking bridge for me. All right, well, I gotta go do some weed eating, so I'm gonna go do that before the sun goes down. But uh, yeah, there you have it, preparing chestnut and sawgill mushrooms. Bye-bye, y'all.